Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Aditya Gupta. I am currently pursuing my DM in pediatric oncology from AIMS New Delhi, and I did my MD in pediatric again from AIMS Delhi, and I secured all India rank two in AIMS DM entrance for the DM pediatric oncology. So in this video, I'll be talking about how do you prepare for INI super specialty examinations and uh, NEET super specialty examination, uh, along with an honest review and a review for Preplada. I think it's the only platform, it's the only app which right now has, uh, uh, you know, uh, the only app in my knowledge. There might be others, but it's the only app which has uh, something related to super specialty preparation. So. Unlike NEET PG, which required you to prepare for like you know plethora of nineteen different subjects from MBBS. The good thing about uh, be it uh, INI, uh, you know INI uh, SS or your NEET SS is that you just have to prepare one subject. Although that one subject itself is so huge that uh, probably uh, you know it uh, trumps the amount of syllabus and the amount of uh, efforts that you had put in for NEET PG. I'll be talking specifically about pediatrics because that's what I did. But this these broad principles are valid for both pediatrics, uh, medicine, and surgery. Everything. Now let's talk about the exam pattern. Actually, so what AIMS used to have now, AIMS and PJ exams have been combined together to form the INISS. But the examination is still conducted by AIMS, so I'll go into that uh, aspect. So AIMS used to have this typical 60-20-20 format. What is you ha used to have it? It used to have an 80 marks ka. It used to have an 80 marks ka theory paper, and it used to have 20 marks interview. In that 80 mark theory paper, 60% of the questions, uh, sorry, 60 marks questions, that is around 70% of the paper, in fact, used to come from that particular super speciality. For example, I'm preparing for pediatric oncology, let's assume, or I'm preparing for neonatology, the most, uh, you know, the most uh, super specialization done as well as pediatrics and so on. So that 80 mark pay paper, 20 questions will be general pediatrics question, and 60 questions will be neonatology. For example, let's assume you were preparing for uh, uh, gastroenterology. So 20 marks will be, you know, 15 to 20 marks will be in from medicine, sort of medicine, and 60% of the pay questions will be definitely from just gastroenterology. That's about it. When PGI used to conduct its paper, and even now in the INISS also, there are certain specialities, especially the pediatrics of specialities, for example, pediatric critical care, and uh, you know, pet, uh, they still, uh, PGI has still has a separate exam. Now in the, that scenario, uh, PJ ha usually had the pattern that 50% of the paper around will be from the broad speciality, that is pediatrics, and 50% will be that specific part. That is your, let's say, critical care. Uh, NEAT earlier also used to follow this pattern. 50% of the paper will be from the broad speciality that you're covering. For example, you're preparing for gastroenterology, 50% will be medicine, and 50% will be from gastroenterology only. This has now changed where entire syllabus will be just from the broad speciality bringing more importance of a general view of everything rather than that particular speciality. Now I'll be talking about how do you prepare for these two things in conjunction because obviously you'll be giving both the exams. You have to prepare for the broad speciality also and you have to pre prepare for that particular super specialization that you're appearing for, especially if you're going to prepare for INISS, especially if you're aiming aims. You have to prepare your specialization uh, thoroughly because 70% of the paper will be just from that super specialization. And the remaining 20%, 30% paper or 30% pay paper will be from, you know, the broad speciality. And 50-50 as far as your... Uh, even if PGI is conducting the exam is concerned. So let's begin. So as far as pediatrics is concerned, the standard textbook that you have to read is Nelson. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Be it NEAT SS, be it INISS, be it PGI, AIMS or whatever that is, your, uh, you know, the, the questions in pediatrics, the general pediatrics will be framed from Nelson. Like there's no doubt about that. I mean, uh, there's no other book. There's nothing else. Uh, there will always be, that's the standard textbook. Always will be pre pre framed from that. And this Nelson can be replaced by Sabastin or Harrison as far as surgery and medicine is concerned. So for the journal part, you have to read this book and you have to make notes from it. Again, if it, like just like Neat PG, you again have to make notes because the syllabus will be huge. You have these two huge volumes of Nelson. You would have to make notes and you would have to revise this journal part because 50% of the syllabus will be from this journal pediatrics part or uh, at least 20 to 30% of the syllabus though definitely will be from this journal pediatrics part. As far as NEAT SS is concerned, probably the entire syllabus now is just general pediatrics from every broad speciality, every, uh, from every speciality question. Again, the questions will be just from Nelson. Now, from the reviews that I have gotten from my seniors, so Dr. Paryatosh and Dr. Ajmira, she ha they both have cleared the pediatric critical care and pediatric hematology oncology this time uh, as far as the INISS is concerned. They both use prep ladder. So I can, uh, if you're someone who is bad at making notes, 
for someone who needs certain help as far as preparing for these uh, uh, DM entrances is concerned, the only app that I can definitely recommend to you right now is Preplader. I, in my opinion also, it's the only app which as of now has the advantage, like the you know, first mover advantage, the only app that is there in the market actually. So what they told me from what uh, I have uh, learned, they have a good question bank, they have a good uh, set of notes. And uh, so basically the everything like just like need PC, everything will boil down to you know, you'll be able to revise this if you're able to revise the entire huge syllabus in the last 10 days and 15 days. So for that, uh, if you're preparing for a pediatric super specialization, so making you cannot revise the entire Nelson in, you know, 10 days. That's simply not possible. You have to make notes. So A, you can make your own notes or you can take the help of these apps to make your make notes and prepare with the help of these Q banks. That is the one thing you can do. Uh, in earlier times, what people actually used to do, they used to attend Dr. Minakshi Botra classes actually. She used to take classes for the NEET PG prep. Now in the similar, uh, in a similar manner, uh, uh, people used to attend uh, Dr. Uh, you know, uh, Dilip's classes for medicine and things like that. The concept basically being same that, you know, be it PG or SS, uh, the questions are going to be of sim slightly tougher type, but the essence will obviously remain the same. And you need to essentially revise the entire syllabus in a very small period of time. So you need a set of notes. You always need a set of notes. You can make them yourself. Obviously that would be great. If somebody helps them through the help of these videos from Pe prep ladder or through the help of, you know, attending these classes or through the help of the Q bank or the, the ready-made set of notes, obviously they, they have a ready-made set of notes right now. That's a new in thing. Uh, you can use it to revise. Uh, so these are the set of notes that I had a uh, hands-on uh, experience from, like this is from my super specialization that is hematology oncology. So they are actually made from Nelson. Uh, you know, these images are given in Nelson and they have made it like, you know, in a re really compiled, you know, point wise manner. So for re revision of this general pediatrics part or general medicine part, if you need a come set of notes, ideally you should make them on yourself. If you don't have time, which we none of us has as far as residency is concerned, this is one thing that I can definitely recommend, especially because my seniors have definitely used it and used it to crack the intense examination of INISS. Now, as I said, now I'll come to specifically the super speciality part, especially if you're aiming for AIMS, especially if you're aiming for PGI, how do you prepare for the super speciality 50% part or 70% part? Now, as far as oncology is concerned, uh, pediatric oncology, you have to read Linzowski and Pizzo. These are your standard textbooks. For neonatology, you have to read Ames, NICU protocols and Cloharty. If you're preparing for pediatric nephrology, you have to read Professor Arvind Bagga's book. If you're reading, uh, PIC, you're preparing for pediatric critical care and pulmonology from Ames, you have to read PICU protocols and Professor Cabra's and Dr. Loda's uh, textbook of pediatric pulmonology. I mean, there's no doubt about that. These are the books that you have to read specifically about tech talking about pediatric super specialization for adult super specialization. I can tell you about medical oncology. You have to read Divita along with board reviews. So now the question comes is that you will definitely ask me a lot of you will ask me that the question of specialization, the specific uh, super specialization, oncology, gastroenterology, apart from the textbook of that particular uh, super specialization. A lot of questions are on recent advances. A lot of questions are come from, you know, uh, recent, uh, you know, uh, uh, papers that have come up in the literature. Now, how do you keep track of those papers? How do you know ki which paper from which paper they might just ask a question and medical literature is ever expanding and ever, you know, uh, growing. So, uh, this is what is done. And this is why, uh, this is what is the simple trick that you can use. Just go to that department. For example, you want, you're preparing for gastroenterology or you're preparing for medical oncology or you're preparing for cardiology and you're going to prepare for AIMS. Go to AIMS website, see the professors, the name of the professors and in the name of the professors, type those name on PubMed. You'll get a list of articles that they have written. See their recent articles, see their field of specialization. For example, a particular professor might be researching exclusively on rheumatic heart disease. A particular professor might be specifically concerned about arrhythmias of the heart. See their particular field of specialization. Make a list of the specific fields of specialization. Especially look for any review articles those particular professors have themselves written. From there, these review articles themselves, they can become your, you know, questions can be framed from these particular review articles themselves. And uh, apart from that, you have to keep a track of four major journals. That is New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, your British Medical Journal, Lancet, along with Cochrane Reviews. These four reviews, along with the professor list that I told you, see their specialization, 
see any review articles that they have written and this will keep in track as far as the recent advances part is concerned which can comprise 10 to 15 odd questions so it's not a small thing definitely it's not a small thing as far as pediatrics is concerned always keep track of the last one year indian journal of pediatric recommendation and indian pediatric recommendations so this is how this is just a brief overview as far as how to prepare for your neat uh, ss or uh, you know ini ss is concerned you have two parts you have your broad speciality and you have your super speciality the broad speciality part uh, the books are standard there is no doubt about that nelson for pediatrics harrison for medicine and sebastian for surgery you ideally should make your own notes. We do not have time. You can take help of the prep ladder app to have the notes and the Q bank. You can obviously watch the videos as well. Earlier people used to attend the neat PG, you know, uh, 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 faculty classes, be it Dilip or Dr. Minakshi or something like that. Uh, now you have them online in the form of these apps and uh, uh, the notes are good from the reviews that I've gotten. They are, they are definitely good. For the super speciality part, which most people don't know about, you have to you read that particular super speciality books. I've told you the list of books as far as pediatric super specialities are concerned if you are aiming for aims the same point of time for the recent advances part the simple trick is you have to find out the interest of the professor which is making the paper and for that the simple answer is in PubMed just go to PubMed type that professor's name see the review articles that he has written in the past one or two years I can give you a definite example for example uh, let's assume you are preparing for pediatric nephrology uh, Professor Bagga just had a recent article and it's an excellent article by the way, like probably one of the best articles I've read in my residency on how to treat HUS in a developing country. So HUS is a very important topic, be it, you know, general pediatrics or be it your pediatric nephrology. So you should know the guidelines for a developing country and they have been written by a professor in Ames and they have been, you know, written by a very, like not just reputed, probably he's the best professor, uh, uh, all my regard for Professor uh, Arvind Bagga, uh, best professor over there. Uh, the, his guidelines, he himself has published those guidelines for a developing country. Obviously, some question definitely can be asked in some form or other from those particular guidelines. This is particularly valid for every specialization. For example, if you're preparing for uh, you know, pediatric rheumatology, uh, the chief of uh, pediatric center, uh, advanced pediatric center in Chandigarh, uh, he, uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, he uh, Dr. Singh, he must have written uh, a lot of, uh, he has written a lot of papers, uh, especially on Kawasaki disease. And uh, since he has written a lot of paper on Kawasaki disease, you should definitely read his review articles and a recommendation as far as Kawasaki disease is concerned. And obviously some questions definitely will be framed from Kawasaki disease if you're preparing for that particular uh, not just from Kawasaki disease, from particularly from those papers that he has written and recommendations that he has given. So that's how you prepare for that recent advances part. So thank you and have a nice day.